Hello everybody. Um, so this is going to be my hours of service video. Hopefully try and explain how they work for us truck drivers. It took me, it's taken me basically this entire last year to really come to grips, grips with it. It's a bit confusing. Um, I really wish on this phone I could like just automatically turn the camera facing me, then flip it around, but apparently it doesn't want to do that. So excuse while the camera flips around. Um, so, ah, here we go. These are the clocks that run truckers' lives. It, ignore this part where what it says, normally this would this would be, cap out at eight if it was the start of a fresh day. This would be 11. This is the 11 hour driving, which that's honestly the one that all the other three revolve around. We've got our 14 hour on duty, 70 hour on duty. So. Um, Let's start with the 70. That is your, you have in eight days, basically in a week, you have 70 hours in which to be on duty slash drive. Once you hit that, once you hit 70 hours, if you haven't hit the eighth day when you can start recapping hours, you can't drive. This is where I'm saying everything kind of revolves around that driving time. Um, you can you can be on duty. You can be on duty on duty indefinitely. You just can't drive until you've done your 10-hour recap some hours or done a 34-hour reset. So that's that's your the hours you can work in a week. Which that's the one thing that's funny. Everyone says about trucking. Oh, you make great money. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm making decent money. I'm I'm making a bit more than I was making doing tech support. Um, I am, of course, working 70 hours a week as opposed to 40 hours a week and no overtime at all. Um, okay, so the 14 hour on duty. This is your daily limit. As soon as you begin your day, the first thing you have to do every day is your pre-trip inspection. As soon as you go on duty to begin that pre-trip, the 14 hour clock begins and nothing pauses that clock at all. There, there's a way, way to kind of pause it with an 8-2 split, which I'll get into maybe later. Depending on how long this runs, it may be a separate video because that in and of itself is pretty confusing also. But so, start of the day, you do your, you your pre-trip. That right there, that's gonna knock off half an hour of your 14 hours that you can, that you have to work with that day. Now, what that means is, any given day, once you start, you have four, you have 14 hours in which you can drive your 11 hours. Doesn't matter how you break up at 11 hours, except with one caveat, which is that rest break. I'll get to that in a second. But you you have those 14 hours within within which to get your drive time done. Realistically speaking, you've only got about 10 hours of honest driving time you're going to do because there's you're going to waste time getting rolling once you're done with your pre-trip, um, pulling in and out of places to take your breaks, that, that, finding parking. That's that's you're going to eat up at least one hour of drive time a day just getting in and out of places. Period. So when you're trying to pre-plan, so on. Just pretend that 11th hour isn't even there. You're, you're gonna use it, but you're not gonna use it. Plan around 10 hours. So, where was I? Okay, so now we're gonna go with this eight hour mark right here. What happens is, once this 14 hour one starts, this eight hour one starts as well. Before you run out of time on this, you must stop for a half an hour be off duty completely for a half an hour straight no nothing else a half hour straight what happens at the end of that once you do that half an hour you then get back you then can use the rest of whatever you have left over in that 11 or 14 hour day um, one part where it gets confusing is let's say you get up it's eight in the morning so it's eight in the morning you're getting out of bed, doing your pre-trip. Um, you drive 
for like two hours and then you stop for half an hour. What's gonna happen there is because of how little you drove, you're, as you're driving on the eight hour, th these things go down. That is kind of self-explanatory. But once you hit that half an hour break, this resets out to however much time you have left. Now, say you've only been on duty for that half an hour for your pre-trip, and then you drive for two hours, and then you're off duty for another half an hour. You've recapped, you've gone back up this eight hour mark, but you still actually have more time on both of these lines than is allowable. You, you have more than eight hours on both these clocks at that point. So in order to use your full clocks that day, you would actually then have to take a second half hour break. The w best way I found to do it, I know a lot of truckers like to just, they say, oh, I just, I'm, I drive my full eight hour, I don't stop, and at the eight hour I take that half hour and then finish out the rest of the day. Me personally, I do like to get up, stretch out, walk around a bit. I personally, try and stop about every two hours. Get out of the truck, hit the bathroom, refill my soda, and then I'm back on the road. So, yes, I'm taking, I'm stopping for about five minutes basically every two hours. So I generally will get, to, get this eight hour clock down to about two hours before I actually take that half hour break. So once I take that half hour break, I then, have then th these th this one up here as you see it's reading 622 622 this reports whichever one of these clocks is lowest because this is how much time you got left to do anything how much time you got left to drive say you've got I see 46 53 here not here um, I've got over eight hours but I still only got 622 here in a minute this 14 hour clock, since I'm in the sleep work, this is going to go down to 621, and that's what this will report. This is going to stay at 622. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, where was I? Where was I? So that's a pretty quick explanation of how the hours work. Everything revolves around the 11 hour drive shift, because you can't drive if you're out of time on this. You can't drive if you're out of time on this. You can't drive if you're out of time on this. You can't drive if you're out of time on this. You can do anything else. You can't drive. Um, the way you get your time back to drive is one, other than that half hour break to finish out your 14 hour, is the 10 hour sleeper, sleeper break. Once you are in, once you are off duty or in sleeper for any combination uninterrupted of 10 hours, all of these refill, not this one. Like I said, that's recaps. Let's get to that later. But you get you get your 11 hours back, you get your 14 hours back, you get your eight hours back, and you go forward. Um, caveat on that, of course, if you have less than 14 hours total left down here, you're obviously not going to get back those full. Um, and see, once again, 621, 621. So. Everything else is paused except for on duty. This is what I was saying about this clock doesn't stop. I can't sit around for a couple hours and come back with that extra time. A lot of a lot of people complain about that. The only way to technically pause this 14-hour clock is the 8-2 split. This the 8-2 split is confusing as hell. It I literally been driving for a year now. I literally, honestly, just figured out how it actually works two days ago. There, there's some, a lot of other explanation videos that kind of explain, they explain what happens at the beginning of it, but they don't explain what happens at the end of that two hour part of the 8-2 split. So we're gonna take the, here's my example right now. So I'm done, I am in sleeper birth. We're on, we're, we're saying I'm gonna do an 8-2 split. This is gonna keep counting down. Once I get to eight hours in sleeper birth, what's going to happen is, while this, in six hours and 20 minutes, this is gonna go into the negative. 
still golden because I'm in sleep or I'm not driving, I'm doing anything. Once I hit the eight hour mark, what then happens is, that's where the kind of pausing the clock ends. Whatever I had left over at the beginning of that sleeper time, at the eight hour mark, gets moved forward. The, that eight hours, and it has to be eight hours in the sleeping berth. Nothing else will do. I once tried to do it with eight hours in off duty, it didn't work. Thankfully, I could adjust my loss. I actually honestly was sitting in the sleeper berth for that time playing video games. But, um, so it has to be eight hours uninterrupted sleeper berth time. You can't change to anything else during that eight hours. And then once the eight hours up, I'll get back my 619. That'll get moved forward on it. And then I can do my driving and so on. The part where it gets, got, it gets confusing, got confusing for me is what happens after you do that, that additional two hour break. So we're going off of eight hours, driving, do it. I, let's say I finish out with two hours left over. Um, or just so it's not as confusing for me to describe it, let's say I've got three hours left over. I then go into off duty or sleeper berth. The, the second two hours can be any combination of off duty or sleeper berth as long as it's uninterrupted. No on duty or driving during those two hours. What happens at that point is all this basically gets erased. And so right here at six, I, I do three more hours at the end of that eight hours. So we subtract three from both these clocks. And at the end of those two hours, everything that came before the eight hour break is technically like it didn't happen. It's a brand new day. So in, th in this instance, my brand new day, at the end of those two hours, I'd start with eight hours on the 11 hour and um, 11 hours on my 14 because I had already used those three hours before I did, before I did that two hour break. I'm going to try and explain that one more time to, just to try and make it a little clearer. You start one day, use whatever time. Take eight hours. At that point, you've now extended this day out. Once, you're, once you've done whatever you need to do on this other side, you take those two more hours, and then at the end of those two hours, the previous day is gone start out with whatever began at the end of that eight hour or you start at the whatever you have left on a fresh day the end of those two hours minus whatever you used in between eight and two hours it's still confusing but it makes sense once you actually use it hopefully hopefully you never really have to use it I've I've the what within the last three weeks I've had a couple instances where it was useful um, one was I drove up to Vegas from Phoenix which is what I'm doing tomorrow um, and the way it worked out I didn't have enough time to get all the way to Vegas I had one day I was here in Phoenix I didn't have enough time left on my clock that day to get all the way to Las Vegas so I got up to Kingman from there I continued on to Vegas the next day. My appointment was so late in the evening that if I hadn't used the eight hour extension, I would have been outside of that 14 hour rule. So basically, I, w I woke up that day, started driving. It was It's only like two hours from Kingman to Vegas. And then I parked over at the TA. Sat there for nine hours. That's how long it was until I had to get to that appointment. <laughs> that, that's the kicker. It was just enough time not quite enough time for my 10 hour break but just enough time for that eight hour i'm not even going to use the term break the a2 split break anymore it's the eight two extension because that's really what it is it's the eight extension to recap -ish. so you only really ever you only should ever really need it if you're going to be somewhere close but you don't you're not going to have you're going to have enough time to take it but not enough time to complete a trip and get parked within your 14. Other than that, it, you don't 
don't really need to use it. 10 hours, 10 hours or better. Obviously, you get that, you get, you, you get, go to sleeper, you get that little bit of time in sleeper to relax, maybe watch an episode of something on, on Netflix or YouTube, then go to sleep, then you can wake up, and you, you, you can start, you actually have time to wake up. Base, or at least maybe it's just me because it takes me about an hour to go to sleep in the first place and then I wake up about 45 minutes to half an hour before my alarm goes off which I always have my alarm set for the absolute latest I can sleep so the, the 10 hours is obviously better when that when I had to do the 8 so like I said I still had to have that hour before I could fall asleep and I had to be awake I, I knew I wasn't this was one of the times I didn't wake up before my alarm I knew my body was going to want that extra sleep. And so, on that eight hour break, already ate up an hour just trying to go to sleep. And then on the back end of that, you honestly need, some people are better, some people are, you need at least half an hour to wake yourself up before you start your pre-trip, before you drive, before you do anything. So I was only getting about six hours of sleep, which studies say, is all people need. I'd like to meet those scientists and just bitch slap them because, yeah, no, people need more. Yeah, you can survive on six. It's <laughs> the key word, survive. Doesn't mean you're gonna be happy about it. So uh, this ran a bit long. Hopefully it made sense. Um, if you have more questions about it, leave comments, like, subscribe if it was useful. Um, hopefully I'll do more as I get on down the road, think of things that I had a problem with in my first year, things I've learned, things that other people really might want to know. Uh, bye.